Firstly, everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Paulie, and sitting with me today is Coach Morley. Um, welcome, Coach. What's up, Paulie? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on this side of the couch for once. Yeah, normally you're asking all the questions, so it's, uh, hopefully we won't make him too uncomfortable, or we will, and we'll get some really good responses. Ah, uh, it's all good. Ask away, man. Either way, um, we're just going to ask Coach a couple of questions, and uh, hopefully... It'll be some sort of benefit to you guys. You'll get some sort of value out of it. And uh, hopefully you'll give Coach a call as well at the end of it so you can come train with him if he's not too busy. Um, I know he's got a number of camps and clinics coming up, so uh, we'll talk about those afterwards. But firstly, Coach, um, why did you get into coaching? Well, that goes that goes a long, long way back. So I'll try and do the short version. We can do the long version another day. So coaching for me goes all the way back to childhood. Um, I was the oldest of my generation in my family. So everybody coming up under me, I was always helping them learn skills. Like, okay, this is how we ride a bike. Now this is how we jump on a bike. This is how we do a wheelie. This is how we do a bunny hop. Across every sport that we did. So it kind of, I started doing it early just naturally. And then my dad um, started a crickets Colts team in the local village. I played with that, but I also then would help out with the coaching on that. And then in school, after we won nationals, I got involved coaching the year sevens team, which had my brother on it. And then yeah. sorry, nationals for what? Just basketball. Basketball. Sorry, okay. we've crossed a couple of. Yeah, no, that, that's all right. We're, we're yeah, going to come basketball. We're going to come back to that. But uh, um, and then so yeah, I got into basketball coaching then, and my coach at the time was a really good teacher, and there was pushed a lot into giving back and passing on what we've taught you and giving it back to the next kids that are coming through. Um, That then carried on at university as a way for me to make a bit of extra spending money on the side, coaching at um, All Saints Basketball Club and Bedford Bulls Basketball Club. Um, Different roles, Bedford Bulls was an under 18s team trying to play in the National League. All Saints was a development club for the local kids giving them something to do and both were very fun and engaging but I was drawn more to the All Saints stuff. It was more the community, the growing of the players and the long haul journey. Like bringing them in at eight, nine years old, teaching them how to dribble with both hands to letting them go on to the next things at 16, 17 when they leave school. And yeah, they're competent players. They can go plug into any system wherever they go to next. And then, yeah, it then kind of got to a conversation with my wife and it was like, right, I want to do this. Can't do this as a profession here in England. I've got two choices, unless I want to learn another language. I go to America or I go to Australia. Um, I worked in America for my summers at university, so got to experience a bit of that. But then also came here on holiday to Perth in 2012, and uh, yeah, we didn't want to leave. They won you over. We oh, won yeah. you over. Oh yeah, like I first saw Bendat Stadium, and I jokingly said to my wife, like, right, let's go home, pack up everything, I'm going to go be the janitor here and work my way up. And so that was 2012, 11 years ago. Two years later, we moved here to Perth, and then, yeah, it's just been building and grinding ever since to get to now. Yeah. Um, I mean, what an amazing journey. (laughs) That's Um, the short version. (laughs) But um, just touching on something, you mentioned the championship at school. Yeah, so... Uh, Explain what that was feeling, and that, that, explain that experience. All right, so I have to be, I was not a major player on that national winning team. I was ninth man on the squad but just the experience as a whole and going through that process like the transformation of our school team over the course of 18 months having um, Troy Selby coach us um, shout out to Troy and Cali Elite if that's still running in California when he went back home Um, huge influence in my journey for sure Um, yeah going through that process was really intense like There were training sessions where we come in and it's summertime and the trash can gets put in the middle of the gym. What does that mean? What does that mean? So that trash can is for when you need it. 
Oh, okay. So it's not for a drill. It's in case in case you need to uh, uh, expel some yeah, oily fluids. In case it's needed. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> and, but, yeah. My first question was that too, and his answer was, "You'll find out. Okay. You'll know when you need to know." Yeah. Yeah, we found out real fast. Wow. But by the end of the summer, we didn't need it. Yeah. So like the whole coach Carter. Before I can teach you the game of basketball, you've got to be in condition. That yes. came in hard. Um, so that came in real hard, and then there was lots of fundamental coaching. Okay. Everybody got taught how to really shoot. Everybody got taught how to play, how to bring the ball up the court, how to make the set the offense up, how to play. We had like five or six offenses sets that we'd run through. Like my school books were covered in all the doodles of all the plays and everything. Um, and yeah, it just kind of. So if we went through your diary, uh, unlike other kids that would have probably scribbles and drawings and animations, mine's a playbook. You've got a playbook. I, I, I love it. I yeah, love it. Yeah. So you're a coach. Yeah, and yeah. So we went from our little school in Hertfordshire. We went up to Manchester for the grand final. Two big bus loads of one for the players, one for all the parents, and some of the other kids and stuff came to watch. And the game was itself was incredible. Um, very Did you tight win? Game. Yeah, we won. In okay. The end. Yeah, so we 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 won, and then coach flew out that night. We got picked up by another team and had to had to go out. So he didn't even come out to celebrate with us. But yeah, it was an incredible journey, and I think that's part of what I want to try and open doors for for other people to to experience as they grow. Because I think it's it's important that you get to experience something like that if you can. Yes, absolutely. Uh, at any level. Yeah. It, it doesn't level. have to be the top level. I I was in, I think, the fourth division at soccer. <laughs> um, so we the only people that will come to watch us are maybe our parents. Yeah. Um, but we won that division and that feeling, I, I can... I can only imagine that that's times a hundred when you get to a high level. Yeah, it's pretty um, cool. But it is an amazing film, and you're right. Everyone should have that experience. A lot of bonds, a lot of things learned. Now, um, moving on just quickly, I want to talk, and, and I know this, um, we may not nail down everything, but I want to sort of ask maybe what are some of your core principles as a coach? Like, what are the things that you're trying to... Um, instill in the athletes that you train? So first and foremost, it's important to recognize that basketball isn't the lesson I'm teaching most of the time. Basketball is just a vehicle. Life is quite often the lesson. So a lot of the times when players first come to work with me, one of the first things I need to find out about you is what drives you. So we're gonna have to talk conversations whilst I'm trying to figure out where your skill level is we're going to talk and I'm going to find out what motivates you. From there, I'm also then going to find out, try to find out in a kind of gentle way, a breaking point, are you going to try and punch me in the face or are you going to run away and cry? And I need to know both of those bits of information so that as we then continue to progress in our training, I can hold you accountable that's going to work for you and not just make us butt heads from there it's all about learning how to train learning why it's important to take care of your body why it's important to do the little things like your stretches at night got to do them you got to do some activation in the morning got to do them it's not not up for debate if you want to be an athlete at any level of any description in any sport you have to become an athlete first. You've got to become strong and stable and balanced from ankles to the neck. You've got to then master all of these skills so then we work fundamentally through. And then once you have control of your skills subconsciously, now we can learn the game. Now you're not thinking about your dribbling, now you're not thinking about how to shoot, you're just shooting and they're going in or they're pretty close. Cool, now we can learn all the rest of the game, the strategy, the nuances within the game. So people quite often mistake me as a fundamentals coach. No. I just got to teach you the fundamentals first before you can learn the rest of it. 
I, I have to agree. Um, I think it's something that you would apply in any aspect of life. Uh, I know as learning as a creative, you have to learn those fundamentals about photography mm-hmm. and videography before you progress to making these amazing videos that you see Nike do or, or on TV. Yeah, you've got to um, learn how to frame that shot. You've exactly. got to learn what lighting looks like and what moods the lighting gives. It's the same thing on the basketball court and with training. I can change the entire mood of a gym with one sentence. Or I can change the playlist of music that's on throughout the whole gym and we can change the entire vibe within the gym just with a bit of music. Yes. And that sort of thing is a powerful teaching tool that goes beyond anything just like a normal little coaching book is going to tell you. You've got to learn psychology. You've got to learn all of this other stuff. Well, something important that you touched on was uh, it's not just coaching for a sport. It's you're actually yeah. learning life lessons. Um, and that's, that's something that you need to keep an open mind to. Um, because it's not just about the sport. Like It's not, because at the end of the day, what's the chances that anybody that I coach here in Perth is going to make it to the NBA? I've been here for eight years. Nobody's done it yet. However, the number of people that are going off to college in America, to JUCOs in America, finishing high school in America... Getting college rising. offers, yeah the number of kids coming out of the high schools getting chances on NBL1 teams, that's rising. The number of kids and clubs I've had a hand in their development that are now in that pathway, oh, I can, I can that name, number's rising. I can name 10, 15, 20 maybe, um, yeah. more. That, that's just off the top of my head, I know there's more. Um, but yeah, no, I, I know so exactly what you're saying. It's that longevity. I, I don't care what team you're playing on under 14s, whether it's 14 ones championship or 14 threes. Can you make your pull up jump shots three in a row? Can you make five free throws in a row? Am I worried about you when you're dribbling the ball and the double team comes? Or do I know that you're able to retreat, dribble, open up and escape that or find a pass out? That's all I care about as a trainer. Can you execute these things in the moment under the pressure of the game? Your team coach, their job is the X's and O's and the plays. I'm going to teach you all the actions that make up those plays. That make you the you best the part room. so that you can bring your best to that team yeah. and be a, a, a useful part of that mm-hmm. team. And if you learn all of that stuff, you will get out of here, out of the city, and play elsewhere. But you will be able to go into any system anywhere in the world and play. Rather than just learning set systems as you grow up, one system, and then you go into another team, you're like, um, why aren't you scoring the 20 points you were there? Oh, I don't know how to do this. What do you mean you don't know how to do this? You're a professional player. What do you mean you don't know how to do this? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, moving on to that, we've spoken about winning, uh, but now moving on to losing. (laughs) Um, how do you help your athletes deal with a loss, um, whether it be, you know, uh, at, at any level, really? Um, what are some of the things you do as a coach to help them deal with that loss? So there's, it depends. So first of all, I help them understand that there's, a, there's different types of loss. Yes. Right, so you can lose a game by making a mistake at the end of the game um, saving the ball under your own basket, passing it to the other teams so they get a layup at the end of the game. So it happened in the NBA one recently. Uh, or you could be beaten in a game where the other team is just better than you. The other team is just head and shoulders better than you. They're one step ahead. They're hitting all your shots. You're missing all your shots. They beat you. There's two different ways to lose a game. So if you lose a game by you making mistakes, that's okay. You've got tonight to feel sorry for yourself. Tomorrow, we're going to go over the game tape. Yes. Yeah, I've seen you do this with athletes. And then we're going to look at this. Why did you make that mistake? Ah, I lost concentration. Okay, so when you're fatigued, you lose concentration. All right, cool. Time to get fatigued. Build up that endurance. Get fatigued first, then we're going to work out. Then we're going to go through some mental stuff, some stuff that requires you to think whilst your body is fatigued. Yes. Train within those mistakes to turn weaknesses into strengths. Right? If you got beat by the other team, okay, cool. Let's look at the other team's game tape. 
and work out what they did that was so much better than us and can I take some of that? Can I add some of that to my game? And you hear NBA players talking all about, about it all the time on the podcast. Ah, oh, I took this move from this person. I took this move from this person. Yes, yes. I saw saw them doing this with this. And it's like, sometimes I feel like the people that should be listening to that stuff aren't. And if they are, they're not it's listening not. and taking it on board and applying the lessons. Like, these NBA players are giving out gold for free on all these podcasts. Take it and run with it. It's crazy. Like they're giving you all the insight and I'm not seeing it being applied. Obviously now I'm in a situation where I should be seeing a lot more of the higher level players coming through every single day to get shots. I see a few. But it's crazy how many say have an excuse oh, it's too far. No, it's twenty minutes from the city. There's there's <laughs> a court Within 10 minutes of everyone, yeah, outdoor, there's indoor, always there's always somewhere to get up shots. Always. So there's no excuses for not working. If you're saying you want to make that level. Yeah. So if you're losing games, it's like, right, okay, you've got that night to pity yourself and feel sorry for yourself. Then we're going to work out what happened. And then we're just going to work forward from that. Cool. It happened. Learn the lesson. Move on. Right. And it's just simple and easy and fast to do. But they're not given those experiences within school growing up they don't have opportunity to fail you've got to pass this test got to pass this test got to pass this test and That's also it. when you do fail there's not the uh review process that you take it's, yes okay it's, this is where you messed up on this this is where you messed up on this go away work on it and we'll come back to this in two weeks time no because you've moved on to the next subject you've moved on to the next thing you're learning not interested in that I'm interested in, right, okay, this is a journey from when you start with me until you finish with me. Yes. And then beyond that, because I'm going to keep paying attention. Yes. Right. I get you. It's all that long-term, long game. Now, I was going to ask a question about your favorite past event or, or uh, you know, something regarding that. But um, <laughs> I've just realized there's something way more important that's coming up. Um, which is the Buckets Basketball 3-on-3 three three tournament. Is it a 3-on-3 three three tournament? So, kind of. So, it's the 3-on-3 three three open run that okay. we started at Donny Tacos. You started at Donny Tacos. We started, so, man. So, Coach Morley started a, a, an amazing 3-on-3 three three for all ballers at Donny Tacos. Great basketball court in the city. I was fortunate enough to come and film. And now... Now it has a... Somewhat permanent home at Buckets Basketball in South Guildford. With so. a roof. We have a roof with, yeah, so it's awesome. This school holidays, we, we've been able to open it up so it's no longer just a 16 plus open division. So we've got that 16 plus open. We've got a women's comp. We've got an under 16s and under 14s comp. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it was a really fun concept. You, you approached me saying that Donny Taco, the guys at Donny Taco had asked about can we get something happening here that's going to draw in some more people for them? You were interested because it would draw in, get you within that CBD area in terms of media. eyes and media. And sort of I was right. kind of just looking for having some fun, playing some basketball and having a cool event. So the free or free open run kind of formed as a slight variation on normal free on free. I wanted it to stay with a a pickup playing at the park kind of feel. Pretty fun. Which is what I kind of grew up playing on at Bedford Park at university. People smack talking. <laughs> yeah, it got, it got sometimes <laughs> it, it got fun. pretty intense when some of the high level guys came through. The trash talk got quite cool. So yeah, now, now it's got a home. It's a two hour event, two 40 minute runs, then a semi final and grand final. Players can register as individuals and then yeah, we make up the teams on the day. Try and balance out wherever. We've got a two half court, so we're we'll going two venue. pools. Brilliant venue, guys. Yeah. Like, you've. It's really come together really nicely for you. It's getting there. We've still got a, some more stuff to add in, and there's some more growth to Ooh, happen. Stay tuned. Yeah, which is awesome. Um, I'm excited about all the growth and all that's happening, but it's been a really busy term. You've been extremely busy. I mean, 2023 has been amazing for it. Yeah. Um, it's been a crazy three months. 
but um, we'll, we won't go for too much longer. Um, where can people, I mean, of course, they they know where to follow you, but just to re-illustrate, make sure you go follow Coach Morley where? So Instagram, Instagram is my main platform where I post most of my stuff, so at Coach Morley. Facebook, the same, and then YouTube at Coach Morley Basketball. That stuff is going to be on the rise now. I have the home at Buckets Basketball, um, bucketbasketball.com.au as well. Um, now I have this home, I'm able to put all of my programs in there, let them grow properly how they're meant to, but also I don't have to focus on running a business anymore, which I was having to do for the last five years. Well, not being able to have a, a base, it's hard. It's very it's difficult hard. You to need run a home and base. build programs when you don't have a consistent base, which I now have. So now I have that, I can also start focusing a bit more on this side of stuff and the YouTube and the online programs and building all of that. Well, you've stuff. already done a bunch. I mean, okay, so he's got a great merch shop. Make sure you go check out his <laughs> merch. He's got TikTok. It's he's got YouTube for it. a bunch of tutorials. Yeah, there's um, like 30 or so. Other amazing interviews skills. with coaches and athletes. Uh, your last episode was lit. Uh, sit down that with Coach fun. where you had three amazing esteemed guests uh, I'm not going to even mention their names you're going to have to check out that episode um, but coach listen thank you for your time no uh, is there anything you want to leave the audience with before we go nah no, stay safe look after your body look after your mind look after your family that's all i got for you guys coach thank you for your time you're welcome sir all the best always fun peace out everyone <laughs>